Boston Dynamics just dropped a bombshell that changes everything. Atlas, their legendary humanoid robot, got a massive upgrade. This isn't just another parkour video. We're talking about artificial intelligence that makes Atlas think, learn, and adapt like never before. The robot that stunned us with backflips is now learning to work alongside humans. And honestly, it's both incredible and a little terrifying. Boston Dynamics just unveiled something called Large Behavior Models for Atlas. Think of it as chat GPT, but for robot bodies instead of words. This technology is rewriting the rules of what robots can do. Atlas isn't just following pre-programmed moves anymore. It's actually learning from watching humans work. Let's look at why this Atlas update is such a big deal. Boston Dynamics worked with Toyota Research Institute to build something brand new. They built an AI brain that can control Atlas's whole body in real time. This system takes in camera views, balance signals, and even voice commands 30 times every second. Atlas uses that info to figure out how to move every joint, every finger, every step. The result? A robot that can handle tough, real-world jobs without anyone writing special code for each task. The magic happens through something called large behavior models. Just like language models learn patterns from text, these behavior models learn movement patterns from human demonstrations. Engineers strap on VR headsets and motion trackers, then control Atlas like a remote-controlled body. Every movement gets recorded. Every successful task becomes training data. The AI watches thousands of these demonstrations and learns the underlying patterns. Soon, Atlas can perform the same tasks on its own, even handling unexpected problems along the way. This update matters because it solves one of robotics' hardest problems. Old robots needed new code for every single situation. Drop something? Write new code? Object in another spot? More code? Someone bumps into the robot? Even more code? It was like trying to write instructions for every moment in a person's day. Impossible and tiring. Large behavior models change this. Instead of coding every step, you just show Atlas what good work looks like. The AI learns the rest. The real-world test case proves this technology works. Boston Dynamics calls it the spot workshop task. Atlas had to organize robot parts in a warehouse setting. First, grab robot legs from a cart, fold them properly, then place them on a high shelf. Next, collect face plates and store them in a bin that slides out from the bottom shelf. Finally, turn around, clear out a different bin completely, and dump everything into a truck. This entire sequence happened with one AI policy controlling Atlas. No separate programs, no hand-coded routines, just pure learned behavior responding to simple voice commands for each phase. Here's where it gets really impressive. The researchers deliberately sabotaged Atlas during testing. They made parts fall on the floor. They closed bins that should stay open. They moved objects to confusing positions. Atlas didn't freeze up or crash. Instead, it improvised. The robot picked up dropped parts, reopened closed bins, and adapted to the messy reality of real work. How? Because humans had demonstrated recovery strategies during training. Atlas learned that work doesn't always go perfectly, and it developed backup plans accordingly. What makes this different from other robot systems? Three big features stand out. First, language control means you can tell Atlas what to do in simple English. For example, pick up the legs and put them on the shelf. No coding needed. Second, whole body movement means Atlas doesn't just use its arms like normal robots. It steps closer when needed. It crouches to reach low objects. It even balances on one foot while reaching high. Every part of its body works together like a person would. Third, error recovery happens on its own. When something goes wrong, Atlas doesn't freeze or need new code. It uses what it learned during training to solve the problem right away. The training process shows how advanced this system has become. Step one has humans controlling Atlas with VR gear. Operators wear headsets that let them see what Atlas sees through its cameras. Motion trackers on their body, hands, and feet turn every move into robot commands. When the person crouches, Atlas crouches. When they gently grab a part, Atlas copies that gentle touch. This makes very detailed examples of skilled work. 
Step two cleans up the data, marking good techniques and sorting them for machine learning. Step three feeds everything into a neural network with 450 million settings. This AI brain learns to guess what Atlas should do in each situation. Step four tests the results, finding where Atlas still struggles, then adds more demo data to fix those gaps. The technical skills are amazing. Atlas sees through stereo cameras, feels its body position with sensors, and listens for language commands. All this info goes into the AI model 30 times every second. The model predicts not just the next move, but a short chain of moves lasting a little over a second. This makes Atlas move smoothly instead of in jerky steps. The robot has 50 joints that can move on their own. Its hands alone have seven joints each, letting it grip hard or pinch gently. Coordinating all these parts in real time takes huge computer power and smart algorithms. What really showcases the potential is Atlas's versatility with different materials. Traditional robots struggle with anything that isn't rigid and predictable. Cloth, rope, and flexible materials have been robotics nightmares for decades. But Atlas learned to handle a 22-pound car tire, tie knots in rope, and fold fabric. These tasks would normally require months of specialized programming. With large behavior models, Atlas just watches humans demonstrate the technique, then practices until it gets it right. If you can show it, Atlas can learn it. The performance improvements continue after training ends. Engineers discovered they can speed up Atlas's execution without any additional training. Tasks demonstrated at normal human speed can run at 1.5 or even two times faster. Atlas maintains perfect balance and precision while moving faster than its human teachers. This suggests the AI model builds in safety margins and understands the task deeply enough to push beyond human limitations when conditions allow. This technology marks a big shift in robotics. Old robots needed expert engineers and months of coding for each new task. Large behavior models make robot training much easier. If you can show a task, Atlas can learn it. This means factory workers, warehouse staff, or even rescue teams could train Atlas for their own jobs. The implications extend far beyond Boston Dynamics. We're witnessing the birth of truly general-purpose humanoid robots. Atlas's electric redesign makes it stronger, more dexterous, and more reliable than its hydraulic predecessor. The robot can now rotate joints in ways impossible for humans, giving it superhuman flexibility when needed. Combined with AI that learns like humans do, Atlas represents a new category of machine. Not just a tool, but a adaptable coworker that can handle unpredictable situations. Boston Dynamics partnered with Hyundai for real-world testing in automotive factories. This isn't just research anymore. Atlas will soon work actual jobs alongside human employees. The robot's ability to climb stairs, navigate tight spaces, and manipulate heavy objects makes it perfect for manufacturing environments designed for human workers. Unlike traditional industrial robots that need safety cages and fixed positions, Atlas can share workspace with people safely and flexibly. If you think that's crazy, wait until you hear this. Engine AI rolled out a full-size humanoid in Beijing and didn't whisper it into the world. They put it on a throne, not just any throne, the kind you'd expect in a kingdom of steel and shadows. And for a second, it felt like fiction had stepped over the line. They call it T-800, yes, that T-800. The Terminator nod isn't subtle. The machine is tall, about 1.85 meters, and heavy at 85 kilos. 41 high-degree joints pack into an aluminum alloy exoskeleton built for load and leverage. The power system? Solid-state battery. This isn't a cosplay shell. It's a heavy-duty, full-sized humanoid positioned for the hard jobs. The launch wasn't quiet because the message isn't quiet. Engine AI wants you to picture strength first, and they push the story even further. They didn't just say industrial, they said combat. The company hinted they're quite literally teaching the robot to fight, with plans to enter a free combat tournament later this year. That's a line you don't hear often in robotics. It startled the crowd and lit up social feeds. You could feel the tension, excitement for what's possible, and the obvious question of where the line is. Then came the showmanship. Engine AI didn't only stage a static reveal, they brought rhythm. On the demo stage, one of their nimble bipeds stepped into a hatchet dance, 
an axe prop in hand, precise arcs, time spins, clean recoveries. It was a choreographed routine meant to entertain, not an official test, but it served a second purpose. Balance under dynamic motion, footwork under stress, grip control with a top-heavy tool. Clips went viral because it looked like theater. It mattered because it doubled as a capability flex. There was more. An Iron Man-themed dance popped off during the expo. The crowd loved it. The moves were playful, the beats tight, and the point was clear. These robots aren't only about brute force. They're about control. Momentum in, momentum out. No stumble. Behind the costumes and the music sits a simple truth. If you plan to train a humanoid for contact, you'd better first prove it won't topple when the tempo changes. All right, enjoying the video so far? Let's make it even better. Join our membership to get early access to AI news, secret videos, shoutouts, priority replies from the AI Nexus team in the comments, and a special member badge when you comment. Click join and level up today, or click the link in the description. That said, T-800 wasn't the only character on Engine AI's stage. A smaller player stole a different kind of spotlight. Meet SA02, nicknamed Top Player. It doesn't try to loom. It tries to connect. About 1.25 meters tall, around 25 kilos, 26 degrees of freedom in the body plus simple finger movement for basic grasping. Think less dock loader and more daily companion. The pitch is straight at young people, classrooms, labs, and homes. Roughly 5,000 bucks. That number plants a flag in a fast heating race, affordable humanoids in China. Unitree's R1 put pressure on the market at 5,900 bucks. Engine AI just answered. Both sit near the same height and weight. Both target education and early adopters. But their philosophies diverge. Unitree's base R1 keeps costs low by skipping articulated hands and even head motion on the standard model leaning into athletic stunts and an intelligent companion vibe. SA02 leans into social presence out of the box. Dual HD cameras, mic, speakers, on-device conversational AI, and some finger motion so it can actually hold simple objects. Not dexterous hands. Not yet, but more than a fixed paw. What does that mean in practice? If you want flips, kicks, and a show of athleticism, R1 already has a reel for that. If you want a small humanoid that talks, gestures, and feels a bit more like a character in your space, SA02 is positioned to be that, an ultra-lightweight companion that you can move between a bedroom and a classroom without calling a forklift. Neither robot is a home butler. Neither robot is doing chores while you nap. But both hit a price point that used to sound like science fiction for bipeds. That's the point. Seed the market. Get thousands of hands on these machines. Let the next wave of developers and students teach them real skills. And here's the subtle backbone behind the dance numbers and price wars. Engine AI has been iterating the fundamentals. Their PM01 platform, bigger, pricier, and famously bold, has shifted from acrobatics to fluid motion. In a new from clunky mechanics to fluid grace demo, PM01 shows a calmer gait, smoother balance, and autonomous fall recovery. It can run, halt, drop low, and rise without the awkward stutter you get when control loops fight the ground. Earlier hype proved they could go loud. A world-first front flip got everyone's attention. The new footage proves they can go quiet. Body control that reads as human instead of jittery. That's the foundation SAO2 needs. You want a companion robot around kids and desks? It has to walk like a person and get back up by itself when it doesn't. Engine AI has also been testing their crowd game outside strict robotics halls. At the Crossfire Carnival in Shenzhen, they dressed a humanoid in tactical gear and sent it to mingle and dance among esports fans. It's playful, sure. It's also practice. Big crowds. Unscripted reactions. That's a different kind of stress test. It tells you a lot about robustness, perception in noise, and whether the platform feels approachable rather than alien. Back to the throne. Why the theatrics? Because spectacle primes attention. Specs only land after people look up from their phones. The throne cements the T-800 mythos in your mind. The hatchet routine shows agility under load. The Iron Man dance makes families smile. And behind it, 
SAO2 whispers a different promise. Bring a small humanoid home without emptying your savings. If you zoom out, the strategy makes sense in the Chinese context. Costs are crashing as domestic supply chains compress the bill of materials. Startups are racing towards sub-10K dollar humanoids, slicing away everything non-essential. Some, like UB Tech, stay high-end for enterprise clients. Others push realism for museums and sets. Engine AI and Unitree are in the democratized lane. Hit a price. Ship a lot. Let the market teach you what matters. That's why the SA02 versus R1 tension feels electric. On paper, they look like cousins, similar height, similar mass, a matching joint count. But SA02's focus on conversational presence and simple fingers suggests it might spend more time looking you in the eye and handing you a small object. R1's focus on acrobatics suggests it might spend more time wowing you with what legs and a torso can do under tuned control. Two philosophies. One finish line. Useful, safe, low-cost humanoids that ordinary people actually want to be around. And the T-800? It sits above the fray with a different mission. It signals that Engine AI isn't just playing in the cute bot sandbox. They're staking a claim in the heavy gear arena, transport, endurance, and yes, controlled contact. If they truly train it for free combat competition, they'll have to solve impact tolerance, joint protection, and contact-rich control in a way most demos avoid. That research bleeds into safer hands-on work, boxing with foam today, lifting awkward loads tomorrow. It also forces the team to confront safety framing early. If you're going to sell the image of a fighter, you'd better back it with fail-safes, geo-fences, and behavior locks that make regulators breathe easier. And in a year when the Chinese humanoid race is no longer a headline but a calendar of launches, that story is the differentiator. Because price tags will converge. Specs will blur. What will stick is whether the robot in front of you feels like a product you can trust, a performer you can cheer, or a partner you can learn with. A throne grabs your attention. A smooth gait earns it. The rest will be decided on the floor, classrooms, labs, and expo stages, one careful step at a time.